Hey guys, Tari here bringing you another 2v2 today. We are on Rails and Metal again. Playing for you today, and this is the non meta Cup again, so... Slightly different teams, so this time we got Talisman and Tume, both playing as Soviets. We have a Shock Motor Heavy, Advanced Warfare, which, uh, you know, still got those t 3485s the radio intercept, which is pretty hand handy there. Uh, Sturvik Strafe in this is just garbage, probably the worst ability in the game, but... Yeah, pretty much, oh, no, it goes for Shock Motor Heavy, and, uh, well, the Soviet Shock Army. So one of two main options, and we have uh, the Invictus team here, Legendary and Sanity, Mixed Axis team. They're going for Luftwaffe Supply, Assault Support, and Joint Ops and Insanity actually only fielding two commanders, Luftwaffe Ground Forces and Overwatch. So a few, few bits of ghosting there from insanity it's a pretty useful bit of cover so cheeky tactic there just trying to engage at long range here G42 sitting up in this garrison and I, maybe he heard the windows breaking through the fog of war decides to disengage with his conscripts Conscripts engaging against these opportunities, and that was a mistake running backwards towards this light cover. I think if he stayed in close range, he would have, you know, been in this heavy cover. Which meant if this squad chose to engage this squad, which we'll probably will now, he would be in heavy cover compared to that squad. And uh, opportunities do beat conscripts quite, quite handily. I suppose this is an alright constellation going for the garrison back there. MG42 doing a nice job suppressing those sandbag conscripts. Now quite a few squads here in the center for the Axis, so it looks like they're going to get off to a pretty nice start. Both of these, uh, both of these Soviet players going for more conscript oriented pills, which is interesting because I generally think conscripts are pretty poor. He's a meat shield, but not really that combat capable. Oh, and he loses that conscript squad just there on retreat. Oopsie daisy. Talisman off to a bit of a poor start here. Thanks to these conscripts. <laughs> I'm going to say it. <laughs> conscripts, man, just no good. Especially against Fox Shooters, you can kind of match up alright against Grandius. Not a long range, but you know, if you, if you play it correctly, but Fox Shooters just beat them every which way. And once they get the STG upgrade, there's uh, pretty much no way the Constructs can challenge them. So this is the kind of spread you want on your machine gun. You've got the crew out in front, so if anything charges forwards, they'll actually snipe the crew rather than the gunner. And actually, yeah, uh, back in the day, Cruz made a Kappa Patch mod where he changed the formation on team weapons to kind of be like this. To stop, you know, LMG squads charging into machine guns frontally and uh, constantly causing the gunner mod to get decrewed. Kind of making machine guns more effective, which is nice. Unfortunately, he discontinued working on that mod. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Relic weren't really interested in his changes. This team's engaging here. This is a pretty fair engagement for them. Only two windows in this direction. See how badly the constructs are losing because of this. Like they're probably going to get wiped. Yep, there they go. What is going on here? Soviets playing fast and loose, losing a lot of conscripts. This is a very poor start for them. The enemy is taking our territory. Oh, that's much better though. Getting the flamethrower in there. 
found the torture. It's coming out here. Medics. So slightly more defensive battle group positioning than what we saw last game. Also a much more standard build here from Legendary Grandiers into a 2 2 2. No flame a half track. No skipping tier 1. Oh, this could have worked out if he'd just done a little bit earlier, trying to put a demo charge onto this garrison. Scout car has arrived. Look at this overwhelming amount of grenadiers here, all behind heavy cover, right next to this for reinforcements. Is he going to lose another squad? Okay. It's about to say, my god. So we've got a tier 1, tier 2 mix between these two guys. And we're seeing a sniper from Talisman. We have a bit of Maxi Maxime action. Bit of sniper plate. Send order. Makes them doing a pretty good job of suppressing all these squads, but there's a lot of LMGs here. Just overwhelmed, really. Not enough support. He's probably going to have to retreat that. There it goes. Bit more of a slower pace than that last game. My god, that was so hard to keep track of everything that was going on. Slightly more coordinated efforts here. This time the Axis going forwards. All of these weapon upgrade grenadiers. What can you even do? The answer is not much. That's 2 to 2 perhaps going after the sniper. That is in a bit of a hairy position here. We've got some LMG greens trying to get around to this retreat path. Don't really have um, any good forms to enter tank. No, oh, it does have the AT grenades. That's good. That's them doing a good job suppressing there. We've got Sturms coming around the side though. More Fox coming around the side as well. More just starting to go to work. This could be a dead squad though. Trying to focus it down. Conscript's kind of running. Probably not the best idea. Oh, but he manages to pick them up. D34 in a nice position, though. Shuts down the advances of the allies, but they're coming down pretty hard on this side. Maxim's two conscripts. Making a nice push. This is, we are approaching the stage where the Soviets could start to take over the game. They're going to be fielding themselves some T-70s somewhat shortly. I mean, they just need to treat the combat engine and start building the tech. So if you see them, they're both hitting the required amount of fuel. And it does take quite a while to build that tier 3 tech structure. So you kind of have to anticipate it. You don't want to build it when you've already got tech for both the fuel and the tank. A bit of a waste of potential. Looks like Talisman is actually going to build an extra comm engineer just to put down his tech. And these guys have to reinforce. So both these guys are in a reasonable, reasonable tier 3 tech timing should be. Already got quite a lot of anti-tank from the Axis expecting this. Interesting to see some, uh, some more MG34 playing here. He's doing a pretty good job though. I mean, he was suppressing over here. Now he's rotated and uh, shutting down Tumi's play. So nice mobile MG play by Insanity with his MG34. That's pretty pretty good stuff. I no, see he didn't just bonk it here for the entire game until it got dislodged by a mortar. Okay, we've got tier 4 going down over here. It's going to cover the VP. And uh, it's not as bad positioning as you might think because of the elevation. It's quite often very difficult to actually shoot shoot uphill and land shots, especially if you're using attack round through the fog of war. Very unlikely your shots will actually connect with that tier 4 tech structure. 
Rough grenade over the hedge. Doesn't quite clear the mortar though. He just took down one more model because he actually needs two models to carry the regular mortar around. Regular Soviet mortar. So if it goes down to one man, the uh, last man just runs off the field. It's like, oh, I've had enough of this. I've seen what happened to my comrades. It's not going to happen to me. Okay, so ISG coming up from Insanity. Just, uh, you know, he had a bit of manpower spear. Whilst he waits for enough fuel for his first tank, so why not? And that's good because no mortars yet from Legendary. They are a bit lacking in the indirect fire department. And there are two Maxims on the field, so they kind of do need something. For a kitten cloaked facing on the road. Pretty nice position though. It is a bit risky keeping it out in near cover like that. 222, perhaps trying to bait. T70 here. Pack gets one shot off. And all these LNG Greens doing great work down the center. They're gonna have to fall back. The sniper picking them off. Piece by piece, this is where you need the ISG to start barraging these conscripts behind the wall. Looks like he's doing exactly that. Ooh, almost took down the whole squad there. Oh, and he gets a, it's a mine. <laughs> that was lucky. Two, two, two coming through the center. Just want to get too close to take aim to take grenade. Probably would die if that happened. Because it's really just, as I was saying, can't engage against these TG folks. A second ice chip? No, I think he's using the old uh, auto fire into barrage trick, which lets you get two shots off, which I covered in uh, micro tips and tricks. Maybe four. That was a while ago. I'm just pushing forwards, trying to get these fork screen ideas. And with only two men. No, they can probably stall out here for a little bit. And garrison. Here comes some shock troops. This is what we didn't get to see the other game. They run straight into the 2 2 2 and uh, a lot of everything basically just getting minced. It's not how you want to use your shock troops ideally. This would be better trying to use them around this region. They can kind of hide behind the garrisons, use their grenades. I'm not, I'm not sure they fixed them at one stage because the shock troop grenade used to only do 50% damage against units and garrisons and I think they fixed it but then I think they broke it again in one of the more recent patches was the it was the only grenade in the game that didn't do 100% damage to units inside garrisons They fixed it, but uh, I, think they, I think they may have broken it again. I need to test it. Oh, nice S mines. Could be the end of these conscripts. Not quite. Two, two, two can't finish the job. We've got some overs on the field now for insanity. Big charge through the center for the axis. They've got a lot of forces coming straight down the center. Need some maxims here. Where are the maxims? They're covering this flank. Not much use though. Oh, maybe they're going to take down the pack. T70 senses blood, trying to get the killing blow, and does. It's going to be crewed by the Grandiers. Could be the end of the Greens. No. Now T70 could be in trouble. Perhaps if he uses a tech round, could get one more shot. No. And he popped the crew up there, so wouldn't have got the last hit anyway.
Oh, Sniper picks up the greens and they actually drop the MG42. That could be a disaster. I'm sure those Obers want to pick it up, but it's a bit of a kill zone here in the center. And this is where the Axe is perhaps having a bit of trouble and need a bit more indirect fire. Try to soften up all these allied team weapons. Whose flare was that? That must have been triple wire flare, I guess. No, it must have been sniper flare, that's right. Oh, Collins just gonna get the MG42. Oh ho ho! Oh man, that is bad news for the Axis. These things are impossible to kill. They actually do pretty well with Either that or a Shrek, man. It's so good getting any kind of weapon upgrade on your conscripts. Maybe you could even get them with PPSHs as well. I think you can still upgrade them once you've got a slot weapon. I'm trying to catch all the action, but we've got a lot going on in the centre. A lot of LMG greens just chewing into the conscripts. Looks like we've got a Rakesson creeping up on the side. It'll be a shame for him to shoot here though because unlikely to result in a kill. Maybe if he pushes forward with this JP4 might be able to combine quite nicely. It's even mind there as well. Gotta be careful. This LNG green blob, my god. Oh! Gets punished by that mortar. How's that doing? 14 kills, that's good stuff. T70, ooh, dodges that first JP4 shot. We do have the Rakesson in a nice position though. This could be the end of the T70. Why isn't he shooting? Okay, there he goes. What was up on the SU76? Actually, that's probably going to be the end of the SU76. There it goes. Nice camo Rakesson there by Insanity. And now he's backing that Rakesson off. Shock troops charging forwards. This is one thing they can do. They can run into the opportunities quite effectively. For as long as the uh, veterancy difference isn't too bad. If you're running vet zero shocks into vet five, and your know, STG squads don't expect it to go too well. It is Overwatch from Sanity, revealing all the locations. He's dropping in the sector assault now. I really don't understand how this works. It just seems to drop random bombs and there we go. It picks up the sniper, so that was well worth it. Wow. Okay. Now he kind of baits with the 222. JP4 doesn't quite get the kill though, and once again, Talisman making use of that crew repair, so wouldn't have died to the second shot anyway. Looks like Insanity now putting down his mechanized truck perhaps he's thinking about going for king tiger next shock troops are losing out there had to reposition and those fortunately is starting to vet up really well there's a shock troop still at vet zero Oh, it's a demo charge on that building, okay. Oh, that's the SU-85 for two men. Interesting. It's going to keep that Panzer IV on its toes, especially in conjunction with that. This. But now, now it seems like the Allies need a bit of indirect fire. Perhaps Chume would be wise to invest in a Katusha because it's a lot of anti-tank guns and support weapons camping around here. Need to soften that position up. And uh, that low mortar, whilst it's doing a good job, you know, 16 kills Vet 3, it's not quite cutting the mustard. It's gone for a second sniper. Probably going to lose one model here. Or perhaps not. The 
Oscar's in trouble. Probably gonna lose him. Yep, and they dropped the MG42 again. Easy come, easy go. No, he's gonna trade. No, he can't get it thanks to that MG42. Oh, that sucks. Oh, wow, that was a massive ice G shell. I was just trying to crawl to safety just to retreat, man. This, <laughs> it's not worth it. MP4 has to blitz to safety after taking some Zis fire. And there is their Katusha Jumet. Nice to see. Probably needs to invest in yeah, more conscripts. And there he goes straight away. Just needs them for capping and uh, AT grenades. And even if he does go for advanced warfare, he can use the conscript repairs later as well, which is pretty nice. The Axis got a pretty, pretty good camp. Ooh. Oh man. Pretty good barrage though, first off, four kills, all of these guys down to almost no health as well. So even though I only got four kills, I mean that's a lot of inerrancy which is always useful. Though, I mean the first star of inerrancy unlocks the creeping barrage for Soviets, which these days actually isn't that good. It used to be a bit overpowered, but now nobody really uses it. It too is what you need with your Kachusha. It's not like the, what is it, or the Calliope or the Walking Stuka where they get reload bonuses at Vet 1 and Vet 2. Vet 1's not a big deal with the Caddy. Speaking of the Stuka, that is now in production for Insanity. So that's why he went for his mech truck, not for the King Tiger. For the Stuka, which is a pretty good choice. And it looks like we've got tier 4, and we're going to see a Sturm Panzer. For Legendary. Talisman saving up for his 152, just about to hit the field. It's a tiny bit more fuel and manpower. Oh, there goes 2 2 2 Constance pouring in from every direction. If you 42 repositions back, probably within reinforcement range, he is indeed. There's a lot of Constance trying to stop, but here comes all those Grandies. They're back from that Caddy Barrage. Starting to rip in. Here comes the Caddy Barrage again, though. Oh, a little bit deep. No, it's just, it's just a long range Caddy Barrage. Massive scatter. Managed to clear the MG42, though. That was. Highly vetted, so it's a pretty big loss. Uh, that wasn't too dead. I think he what, got three models with that one. No, two, only two models, in fact. So yeah, not not that devastating. That's the scatter of their long-range Katusha. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. Bit of a, maybe a counter brush there. I mean, all of his stuff was in a line there. A couple of team weapons and the caddy. That could have gone a lot worse. Kind of lucky scatter there for Tumi. The well, Stern Pants is on the field, but this may not work out so well because it's a 152 starts to you know, camp and center. This thing's not going to be much use. Here comes the JP4 coming down the side. That's already up to Vet 1, which is exactly what you want. And 152 has to back away. Is there still that mine there? No, and this is a lot of anti tank going forwards for the Axis. Oh, we've got the Zis in a pretty nice spot. And there was a mine, maybe. I, I missed that one. So like this guy perhaps, yeah, he's switching rounds, but it takes such a long time to switch to armor piercing. Oh, but he gets a kill. A bit of blocking there by his allies, JP4, and the JP4 now trying to use camo. Back away. Now, things starting to go quite poorly here for the Axis. T70 racking up some kills on the flanks as well. What's all this is going down? 
This is gonna take mass Faust though. One more Faust. He's got the munitions. No, not gonna happen. So I hear some. I thought I heard some artillery coming down the center, but no. I'm surprised this conscious didn't try to stick around and get the cap there. Oh, there's a machine gun, I guess. They're trying to get around on the flank of it. The caddy must be cooled down just about now. There's a D's. Looks like he's bringing it up for another barrage. Good stuff. Oh, there's a Stuka barrage. Ooh! Oh my god, his caddy dodges. Incredibly lucky again. Moves it reasonably close this time, trying to target that machine gun. And he clears it and dec and kills the weapon as well. Nice. Oh, 152 clears out the pack, so the axe is starting to crumble here. They've got the recon plane going. So good. Got quite a lot of so things giving them sight between the, the flare things on the points. That was a stupid dive bomb. Looks like it was dodged. Yeah, it looks like it was dodged. But now this demo charge isn't going to do much because nobody's going to be able to garrison that building. Oh yeah, I haven't seen Luftwaffe supply for a long time. The uh, airdrop medic supplies are actually pretty pretty strong. I think you can heal in combat with them. I think they may give you a combat, small combat bonus as well. And the heal rate on them is actually really impressive. So I should probably use these a little bit. Five two finds a nice hit on the JP4 and then comes some planes. This is the tactical IL-2 Sturmvik attack, and we got to see in all its glory there, not doing anything at all basically. <laughs> got to see Seven trying to get the wipe. These guys pretty clumped up. Looks like he's going to try to chase them. Nothing nearby. JP4, yeah, he gets the wipe. Check before lining up, perhaps going to try to get this as it backs away. We've got Shrek coming as well. Nope, misses first shot. TCM will be able to get away. Oh, PPSH cons charging through the center. And he went for a stoke. That's an alright decision, I guess. That's a T-34-85. Okay, Brush coming in. Oh, he wipes. No, he doesn't. The last model was just standing way away from the rest of them. Big push coming through the center. There's the pack here. And it's ripping in. So is the JP-4 from the side. Ice. Oh, that's going to be the end of it. Yep. T-35 goes down. But was that the end of a Axis tank? Maybe that was the end of the T-70. I heard... I thought I heard two tanks go down there, but no, I don't think so. I heard two blood curdling screams though, man, that was something. In comes the sector assault. Which wipes something. Interesting to see the 152 50 cal trying to shoot at that Overwatch plane, but I think that A half track did last game, right? Hands of 4 now on the field for Insanity. That is finally going to be, be the end of that T70. That thing was a real thorn in his side for the whole game, basically. The last 20 minutes or so. Been wiping. Inflicting manpower bleeds. So heavily. In comes the planes. Here comes some more bombs. I'm just bombing a random area here. I mean, there's nothing nearby. I have no idea what this, how this target stuff. Like, there's nothing, nothing at all here. 
I don't know how this works, but I mean, when the bombs land, boy, do they land! But they seem to be a bit irrational. We have two hundred points remaining. Got T thirty four eighty five going after the Schwer on the side, but there's the Stug now, and that's now got Viet one with the target weak point. Be the end of the T3485. Perhaps Stuck's gonna try chase 85. Should be safe. There's a Zist there for protection. If he tries to chase any further, that could be the end of the Stug note. Just packs up, here comes his turn pans and support and the JP4 massive relocation of armor. Got trading rocket artillery here. Oh, but he loses his up engineers, perhaps bit too costly. Oh, and he found that! He just dived deep with the Stug and found that Rakesan, I mean, no, not Rakesan, Kachusha, because all these trees have been knocked down. Is this in an alright position? Now the 152 kind of uh, doesn't have enough support right now. And uh, remember that even with armor piercing loaded, not that good at a tank destroyer, very long reload time. I think it does 200 damage. Same as the Jackson. This penetration is nothing special either. The uh, biggest asset I suppose it has is its range, but yeah, it's not, not the best tank destroyer. And this is where I think Barton and Price had the right decision going for a fuel cache. Seems like Chume and Talisman haven't had very good fuel control so far. Axis have got a fuel cache, so they are kind of out incoming their opponents here, which is allowing them to field a lot more armor and uh, kind of winning the game because of it at the moment. I do like to see some PPSH conscripts so though. He is coming forwards but runs straight into that Shwe HU and that was a bad play. Neutralize that sector but he's gonna have to retreat shortly. I'm gonna neutralize this as well, but Leading a lot of manpower right here. With that IR search like the map hacks. So I think you know Axis have just uh, taken out a few more vehicles between the Katusha, the SU-85, T-70. Oh, could this be the end of this machine gun? And the house is trying to get out and probably going to be safe because. 5-2 takes such a long time to reload. And no AT support over here for Talisman. He's just trying to rely on conscript AT grenades, but that's <laughs> that didn't work out too well. Conscripts get wiped. Big push here. What's it? Armor is this? What's a good work? What's that? The uh, one IL2 bombing run takes down the Shri HQ. That is nice. Thanks to probably that doubles this action. And that is a Panther now for Legendary. He's got a pretty formidable force of armor now. Lost his Panzer 4, but got a Panther instead, which is very nice. Kitchen gonna get away just. Close call. The allies have managed to. The trouble cap running very briefly. Which is what they need to get back into this game. There's a caddy. I think the Katusha is probably probably the most balanced piece of rocket artillery, you know. If you get it in close it can wipe its rockets do okay, but it's got quite large scatter, it's you know, you have to tick to get it. Very fragile, dies to one hit. I feel like every other rocket artillery piece should 
Try to be bounced around the Katusha. Oh, there's yellow cover here, but these snipers not camouflaged. Looks like they're going after the 152. It's got main gun destroyed. I think what's happening at the moment is every t every single time a tank goes below 25% health, it gets main gun destroyed. So you usually don't see it on medium tanks because you know 25% health for them is one shot from death. Oh, what is this coming in here? Incendiary bombing run, which is medics. This could be nasty. Massive AT grenades, and this could be the end of the Panther here. Don't expose his rear armor to the Panther. I mean, no, to the 85. Oh, and he runs over another mine or something. This is, turn is this around? No, perhaps not. 85 is going to clean him up. Whoa, this went horribly wrong for the Axis. Man, they've lost so much armor there. Diving after the 152. You know, I can understand diving to about here, but diving into the base gives. Anyway, such a long time to rotate the anti-tank. It's uh, really not worth it, unless you do it like stealth mode. Where your opponent doesn't know you're chasing, but they definitely knew, the allies knew that those mediums were chasing after the 152 and uh, backfired on them badly. But thanks to that fuel cache, you know, he's going to have enough for another Stug almost straight away. Still got quite a lot of fuel in the bank. Could use the... Uh, Supply drop zone. Supply drop zone, not zone. What is that? It's a poor pronunciation. Nexus. Still applying some pretty good VP pressure. Allies are feeling that pressure. I mean, they're kind of just chucking you into the VPs at the moment. Try to get those caps going. Here comes a tactical IL-2 strafe. This could actually do okay. Yeah, there you go. If your opponent just, <laughs> just sits there for like 15 seconds with infantry alright and it can take out uh, walking stukas if you get a perfect hit but the UI on it is actually wrong which is uh, what makes part of what makes it so bad so it's very hard to target because of the uh, misleading whatever you call that crosshair kind of thing that comes up when you try to target it Second Katusha coming in for Chume. Talisman has a lot of fuel. I feel like perhaps he should... Oh, wow. What was that? No, Kubel. Okay. Doesn't mean that too much. Yeah, I feel like he needs to tick up and try to get some more armor out. Otherwise they're going to get overwhelmed. I mean, they've got 185 and 1152. One, one, it's not going to cut it against all of this Axis armor. And Chume is busy trying to mass Kachusha everything. In fact, has he got them exposed? Stuck coming forwards, gets one of them. T3485 though could get the kill in return. Stuck has a tremendous rate of fire, but he's always reversing in a terrible direction. T3485 has very poor moving accuracy though. Yeah, there you go. Even at point blank, just about <laughs> misses. <laughs> One more shot needed, but I don't know. He wants to get it. Oh, use the stun on the turret, but slightly too late. Could die to the Panzer IV. Oh, where is he? And they got abandoned as well. That is horrible luck for the Allies. He cruises it. Loses his uh, pioneers though, because they're only three men. He's going to try back it out there with that heavy engine damage. 
mines. What is that? What is that destroyed engine? And then if it gets immobilized by like the M20 mines, so destroyed track. Okay, a lot of Overwatch bombs coming in. Don't hit much. Let's took a dive bomb though. Sounds like it's right about here. Oh, two squads down, including the Zis. He tried. He kind of tried to dodge that, but didn't work out too well. What? What? What happened? The 152 just went down to the uh, Rakitin, I think. Oh man, it's so busy focusing on that T3485. I think during all that, the 152 went down. Oh man. Well, that sucks, but <laughs> it does happen sometimes in 2v2s. Oh, it's okay, that gets re abandoned. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. Caddy finishes the job on it. And people do theorize that abandons happen more commonly when, when uh, you know, hit that last hit is really low damage well I suppose that's one benefit of not having ticked up he's allowed himself to build another 152 immediately straight away it's taking a few hits from that JP4 which now hits VET3 that's when it starts to that rate of fire like crazy Axis, I think they're gonna win this one. I mean, the Allies just lost so so many of these team weapons to direct fire, and this was some daring plays with the Stugs, but they were actually pretty successful at taking out the Katushas. The Allies just continuously chuck conscripts into these VPs, but it just uh, didn't work out too well for them, honestly. Kind of just uh, more, more suicidal pushes. At no stage did they kind of have the armor superiority. Because Talisman never ticked up, never got any supporting vehicles. I mean, at least in the other game, Barton had all those SU-76s, which actually did a really good job at keeping the JP-4 at bay, but didn't get to see any of that. Oh, oh. It's a lot of indirect fire. Allies just chucking the unit once again into the VPs. They're so low on VPs, they get chased off this one. Neutralize this one, but I don't know if they can last. Whoa, 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 whoa. I oh, don't know. <laughs> the daring plays there by Chume, but ultimately not enough. Man, I, I feel kind of sorry for Talisman and Chume because it feels like every time I cast them, they end up losing. It's not intentional, I'm not trying to bad manner them or anything. Well, Panzer Fort dives in. He's got that new uh, anime skin. Takes out the caddy. Puma goes down, but JP4 gets the killing blow on the 152. Still needs to throw an AT tank grenade at this Panzer IV, otherwise it's going to rip through him. Oh, it's just going to rip through him. And that is the game. I think uh, Talisman Chumay, you know, they, they could have won, but uh, yeah, I feel like Talisman just needed a bit more support. Even, uh, even EC-76 would have cut it because they just got tore apart by the walking stuka which is at 26 kills and there's a panzerwerf around here somewhere they kind of just just chuck conscripts into the center where there's often machine guns and there's obviously a uh, schwer over here for a long period and i feel like that kind of lost them the manpower game and perhaps they also should have put down a fuel cache just like the axis allies or counter enemies did and uh, they would have been able to 
get a few more tanks and perhaps game would have gone a little bit differently anyway guys i'll wrap on that if you'd like your game to be cast by me details in the video description below otherwise i'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment goodbye and good luck <laughs>